Okay, we're running. Honestly, this is uncharacteristic for me, but I think I look almost cute today. Okay, let's get started. Okay, here we go. Can you believe I made this back when I was like three sizes smaller? It still sort of fits because I made it way too large. And this was never really appropriate for Regency anyway, so this is now my chemise for the Victorian times. Which brings me to today's video. Okay, backstory. You should have that. I don't think I talked about this dress on YouTube, really. So, I made a Victorian dress um, two years ago, precisely, and I had just met my lovely costuming friend group and we were planning this yearly trip to some place to have like a little costumed summer vacation, as you do. And um, I had just met them and I was very eager to <laughs> impress them, so I made this Victorian dress, I think the date is 1875 on the fashion print and I wanted it to be exactly like the fashion print and I was really eager to make a showstopper and um, as you all might know if you've watched my videos and checked my video output I sew very very slowly so um, I think I started sewing the entire thing because I had no Victorian underwear whatsoever around New Year's and it was to be midsummer, so I think I took one month for the corset and um, one or two weeks for the under things, like the petticoat and stuff. And then the dress itself, the skirt took several weeks because I sew so slowly. And um, the upper bit, I had some fitting issues. So, all in all, for the dress itself, I think it was like two months, three months. And I remember. We were going to one of my costuming friends and we were going to spend the night and then the next day we were going to start really early and she was taking us to Vienna in the car and I was sitting there with her during the night and she helped me fix the last little bits of the costumes and the night before that I was up until like 2 a.m. trying to do the really complicated bits on on the train in the back because there's a lot of bulk there and it was terrible to sew so yeah um i made this very roughly <laughs> let's let's leave it at that and most of the edges on the inside aren't even finished i just used my my pinking shears to just cut bits off and i just left it that way which is a completely authentic which i found out during my research for this dress so it's okay i guess and um, I never actually showed you guys because I was in such a hurry to get this thing done because I wanted to wear it to this one event and I've never worn it since in its not quite completeness and I always meant to do it over because there's a lot of things that I have to change a little bit because when I was wearing it there were some issues with the fitting my jacket kept driving up, I think I made some mistakes there and I didn't have the correct underwear. At least not quite. Um, I wore the completely wrong kind of petticoat, but I'm going to get into that later. And I wasn't wearing a a corset cover or anything, which I really need to change. <laughs> and um, I didn't have any ruffles or anything, I just had the dress and a little hat and that was it. So yeah, I'm going... Maybe I should do like a before picture and put some pictures in here so you can see what my issues were. Let's see what I can do with the editing. So now I'm going to put this thing on and explain to you my process and then I'm going to check out what isn't working and what needs to be changed so I can be really proud of this dress because the pictures afterwards they weren't quite what I had intended. I wanted more of a wow effect and it was like a meh, this is an okay dress. I can see there's a lot of work put into this but the overall effect isn't uh, all that great. So let's get started dressing me.
Okay, get the right buttons, get the hook the right way around. Yep. By the way, I saw an exhibition where they, honest to God, said that uh, these shoes were crushing your feet back in the day and that the ones with the buttons were worse because you couldn't change <laughs> how tight they were and it's just amazing to me this idea by modern curators in museums that you can't move your own buttons ever and they even outright said that the ones where you could um, tie your ribbon were so much more practical because you could adjust the size like it's not like American Duchess has their own guide up on how to move these buttons around or anything. It's not like people got footwear made to measure or anything. That never happened in the history of ever. So yeah, some museums aren't as far along as others, I guess. So, properly shoot. And now I think it's time for the underpants. Here we go. I just realized I made a really big mistake. Um, put on the shoes before I'm putting on the underpants. So let's see if that works. Hopefully. Yeah, so um, these were my treasure for a while. These were the first pair of historical anything that I ever bought because these are legit. I'm pretty sure there's some dead stock floating around somewhere because people keep selling these for like 20 bucks on the internet. So probably from around the time where these went out of fashion. Um, they were worn as folk dress underwear over here for a little while after that, but I'm not too keen on that whole folk dress thing. Um, there's a lot of bullshit flying around there, so yeah, not my not my thing. So I bought these and I thought these were fake and I thought, well, they're only 20 bucks, so not going to lose anything. And then I examined them, uh, they're probably mass produced around the end of when these were worn. But they even have a little monogram here, MK. So that's kind of cute. I don't know who that was. And when they arrived, somebody had um, obviously tried to sew them shut all the way up to here in the back. And uh, the tension of the machine must have been really high or the needle very thick or just not very sharp because they punched so many holes in the fabric. It looks awful. And then when they try to open it back up, they cut bits of fabric by accident, so this was a very rough job. So let's put them on, which will be the last time probably that I'm wearing them because I'm going to use them as a pattern to make my own. And these are going to be retired into my historical dress collection, which has all of three things as of this point. Okay, let's see if I can get my shoes in there. <laughs> can you see everything? Probably not. Not the worst of ideas anyways, since YouTube doesn't like it if you show too much of anything. Okay. Oh, that actually works with the shoes. I can kind of pull through. Okay. So my mistake wasn't that big. Okay, now this is just kind of pulled up over the chemise. And I was surprised when I was wearing this, I was going commando. I think I can say that. ate way too much cake in the meantime, I think. Yeah, and I, I really didn't feel exposed at all because they have so much material and the chemise is underneath and you really... I mean, this looks really weird, but you can't actually see anything if you're wearing your undershirt properly. I can't even tie these in the front anymore. Yeah, I need those a size bigger. Definitely. Okay, I probably could wear them over my corset. Okay, me and my funky butt are ready. All right, there's so much boobs in this one. <laughs> okay, let's show you my corset. I made this with the big help 
of needleworking history. She gave me the pattern because I didn't have the corsets book by Jill Salen at this point and she graded it for me and it fit almost like a glove. I had to do minor alterations. And then I completely ignored all her advice and made this out of two layers of just very thick sturdy linen which she told me was a really bad idea but I like that it kind of it warms up and it forms around you and it's very flexible and I even got one of those here the split busk I was so scared of this but it turned out all right and then because um, I'm a fancy lady I put some lace on top not on the bottom though because I didn't really like the look I tried that out it wasn't for me and I even have a waist tape it's only very small because I couldn't find a bigger one at the time and of course lacing in the back so I'm going to put this on now this is really comfortable actually I really liked my my Georgian stays before but this is even better okay and uh, the split busk I'm a fan. I'm really a fan of the split busk and you can tell I bent over in this way too much. Just not as dirty as it sounds. I just keep dropping things. And the busk had kind of, has kind of taken the shape. Oh, and you can see the issue with my shimmies. The waistline is way too high since I gained so much weight in the meantime. That's what happens. Okay. Ladies up. Mm. Yeah, I don't know how far I'm going to lace this today. Yeah, I think that's enough. Also, this um, kind of stretched out. That's an issue. So I can I can wear this with a gap. Right now I'm lacing it very tight. This is actually tighter than it's supposed to be. So this is actually a bit too wide for me. But um, I'll manage for the moment. Okay. I think I need to add some bust improver at some point. <laughs> it's very historical. Okay, so um, I measured and this isn't actually reducing my waist at all, but it looks so much fancier, doesn't it? And um, here's the point where I need to make change number one to the entire outfit. I really need a corset cover, which I don't have. And back in summer, two years ago, I thought, who needs a corset cover? It's going to be damn hot in the summer in the city anyways. But it really, <laughs> it adds a layer and that's not the worst idea because otherwise like, this line can poke out and you can really see these little metal bits here and uh, that's not so great. Okay, this is the bustle. It's a long bustle. It can be adjusted with the straps. This is some Paisley IKEA fabric donated by my sister who had some old bed sheets to get rid of. This is the actual reality of costuming on a budget, using lots of old curtains and bed sheets and bed covers and whatnot. IKEA is your friend, kids, in this regard. And um, I used some twill tape on the inside here for the metal. And so far it has not pushed through the fabric. I was worried about that. So. Let's get my butt started. This is something I don't need to change anything about. I'm very happy with how this turned out. And I'm going to be wearing it in the future also. Okay. Lobster bustle is in place. Now the underskirt that I was very disappointed with. So let's put this thing on. Oops, 
I just heard something rip. I need a lady's maid. ASAP. Anybody want to come live in my closet and help me dress? Applications go into the comment section. Okay. Alright, so this top part here is really pulled down because the skirt is so heavy. And this would really work for a walking dress, but not for a dress with a train. And I added so much ruffle material and so much general material in the back here that um, I wouldn't know how to attach a train because there's so much stuff going on here in the back. Also, if I was wearing like a sheer Victorian dress, this pattern is just not working. <laughs> but it's very fluffy, so I might wear this for the 1880s where there's a focus on the butt and not on the train, so this would totally work and hold out the skirt. Next up, this roughly monstrosity. This is an IKEA bed sheet also. Net Yasmina or not Yasmina, I think. Because I thought it had like a silky sheen and it didn't feel too heavy. And then I used two or three bed sheets and one skirt and it turned out it's really, really heavy. I'm going to get some close-ups of the skirt later. Because when I'm putting this on I can't really film all the details. So yeah, this has a train. <laughs> this has some train. And um, there are going to be a lot of changes to this skirt because I basically only half finished it in the back here. I didn't even cut off any of the threads for the closure and I think I need some backing for this top part because you can see how this fabric stretches out. There's like, I don't know, 15 kilos of ruffles down here. I'm really afraid this part here is going to stretch out and rip at some point. So I might have to reinforce that. Also here you can see what I did with the pinking shears. And um, yeah, another thing. The, these are hanging down very sadly. You're going to see that in a minute. Let me just put this on. Okay. In we go. Whew. Oh crap. A lot of cursing involved in this video. Probably going to have to put a disclaimer in here. Okay, check out my butt. I'm not happy with this at all because point number one, it stretches very much. There should have been some tucks or pleats here, but I didn't want to do them. I thought they wouldn't be authentic, but they would have been a great way to just ease this tension then um, I'm not going to change that I have no way of changing that that's more like it um, but I'm definitely going to finish these little hooks here maybe I'm even going to add different hooks that are a little larger so that I can reach them easier because putting this on is kind of difficult and I might add a little pillow on top of here so that this here doesn't poke out the way it does. You can't see it in the finished dress but it really annoys me. And I need to put the camera down, you can't see my train. Okay. Is this good? Okay. So here's the train. And this Definitely needs a different petticoat because this is really falling in and it won't stay where it should. It just does its own little thing here. Yeah, this isn't good. This really isn't good. I need a petticoat so that this sticks out properly and lies the way it should because this isn't so pretty. It really isn't. Oh, by the way, I didn't close this up because there goes an apron on top. And I, here you can see, I'm currently doing it um, in the print there. Those tucks are actually um, secured by some stitching, so this is what I did. It really helps. One other problem is, 
actually you see the top part of these ruffles there hanging down very sadly and they won't be flattened into place so I will have to attach these with some stitches also which is going to be a real hassle. Next thing up the apron that goes with the dress. On camera this looks way more blue than it's meant to be. So I didn't finish anything here either. Look at that. <laughs> Alright, um, you see I used the bigger hooks here, that's way better. Okay, let's get started. I will have to use the camera for assistance because I can't see what the heck I'm doing. Did I miss a hook? No, I didn't. Okay, I think it's closed, sort of. And no, you can't see the terrible things I did with the skirt anymore. Ta -da. Really, this apron is what makes the look come together properly. And now for my huge ass bow. It's actually a huge ass bow, so this has double meaning, kids. And this wasn't too smart of me. I added some hooks in the back somewhere here, which I cannot find by myself. And when I sit down in this dress, they unhook and I just leave this huge bow behind. Happened to me at the cafe where we were several times. So yeah, I will have to look into different ways of attaching this bow. And I just realized I stopped counting at five, so now we're at six maybe? So I need to do the skirt and um, change how this bow is attached, because otherwise it just keeps falling off. That will be number seven. And now we're coming to the jacket part and this needs some changes as well quite some changes actually so what I really need is a waist tie because I am so high waisted that everything keeps riding up my torso so this needs some waistband ASAP also I want to do some some boning on the inside because it kept wrinkling even though it wasn't too tight and that's a sign that it needs some reinforcement I mean considering this is my first ever 1870s dress. I don't think I did so badly, but I could do a lot better. Okay. Oops. Oh, you can totally see my corset line. Yeah, I need some corset cover. And just help in general, I guess. By the way, I did these all by hand. All the little covers. I also covered the buttons myself. Oh, this is already pulling into all different directions. This is awful. Don't remember it looking so bad. <laughs> this is kind of sad. Ooh. And I used to love these sleeves, but um, that's another point on our list. Forgot how many points we have? Eight? This is now eight. Um, this needs some ruffling. I have. I bought something in Vienna actually, I bought some ruffles, some lace I could use. Okay, so, yeah, it's, it's not 
it's not that tight but I think the waist should be higher up possibly and I need some some waistbands, some ruffles here, some ruffles here like in the image and this is covered now with the back here I might add some buttons here because this is a very 17th thing to do this looks like 1970s, I look like a hippie with this okay and another thing I really need to do besides everything else is change this because I used a straight piece of fabric and this keeps pulling up because it's a straight piece of fabric. I don't know what I was thinking. I thought it would be quicker probably. And this keeps riding up. I mean the sleeves were kind of okay, but this really... Meh. This needs some work. Let me know in case you can think of anything else other than boning and this and the ruffles and a waist tape so this damn thing stays down. This is super annoying. Cleavage close-up. Look at this. This is so pulling open. This is not what this is supposed to look like. I need something that's pulled close so that it sits tight on my body. I, I didn't even de do it properly. I just wrapped it in and then cut it off. So yeah, I might need to do something that is actually in the shape of this. And then I'm going to do both sides, so that it's symmetrical and there's no pull here. But yeah. And oh my god, can you see my corset in this or what? Did I gain this much weight? Seriously. This is awful. And I don't think the waist is too high, I think my shoulder, shoulders are too narrow or something, or the, the... I don't know what this is. I think I did something very wrong in the shoulder area. Also, I have a very strong arm-shoulder game, like anything I sew needs to be super flexible, because I move my upper body around a lot. My singing teacher always whines that I'm so twitchy at the stage. <laughs> Okay, so back when I thought I might also wear this dress for the little ball we held, I thought putting my hair up with like a bun and curls and then this, this would look so cute. These are from Woolworth, super cheap. Although I don't know if blue and pink is really my thing, such a cliche blonde girl thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but there's cream color in here too, so totally legit for adult people. And this is my hat. This didn't have a little thing in the back. There's some leftover curtain fabric <laughs> from when I made my curtains. And I had the idea of having a lot of hair in the back and then some curls tumbling down. And then this. This curtain looks super cute. Oh, this is very room with a view now. <laughs> it's like two decades after, but very room with a view. I need to add this into my life this look somehow and do some better pictures. Damn it! This, this is so annoying. Okay, yeah, I don't have the hair for this right now, but I'm definitely going to give this another try at some point. One thing I almost forgot, I made myself a really big muff with the same fabric on the inside and there's a secret compartment in here for my valuables because this doesn't come with pockets. Because of the apron, I tried to find a way to add a pocket somewhere, but um, it would show everywhere. So I made a muff instead. This is for April, this dress, so it might be somewhat cold. So I could store my valuables in here instead. This is cute, isn't it? it really works with the sleeves. Okay, let's show you. Oh, I love how this looks. <laughs> Let's show you the awfulness that is this train. It looks like a lump. This needs to lie flat. I need a better petticoat so that I can arrange it on the petticoat and the dress is just lying on, on top of it. Yeah, can't even walk in a circle like a normal human being. I mean, other than the fact that I'm really not happy with how the train is lying, I still love this dress so much. God! Ah! 
<laughs> this just won't lay flat. All right, I hope you had fun with me rambling about this dress that I made two years ago. I'm going to make this dress over. Ooh, it's really falling open. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm definitely going to give this a makeover because I already spent so much time and energy making this dress. It's a shame to only wear it once and never be quite happy with it. Sunk cost fallacy and everything. So this is what I'm going to be doing the next few weeks, hopefully, if nothing prevents me. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Bye.